this is Hello. a lot. Oh. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Running with Ryan. Today, we are in the big city of Denver, Colorado. Let's go, Broncos. Broncos, let's go. With my friend, Brendan Leonard. Make some noise for Brendan. <sighs> Brendan Leonard is a ultra runner, author. He's from Iowa, my favorite state. Shout That's out to Ragbri. I'm not lying, I love Iowa because of Ragbri. And you may know him because he directed and starred in a beautifully inspirational running film called How to Run 100 Miles, where he and his buddy set out on one of the biggest challenges of your lives, right? Yeah. Yeah. I would say. Oh, that looks great at R. Okay. So Brendan, how do you run 100 miles? Oh, it's not an instructional video. <laughs> oh. oh, so the title is just like yeah. clickbait. When I do it, I start slow and I finish slower. <laughs> and then you just don't quit. Basically, there's no huge strategy or no elaborate strategy for me, but I'm slow. I think if you're fast, it's a completely different event. If that makes sense? Yeah, that totally makes yeah. sense. But let's talk a little bit about that film because it was like, it hit the heart of everybody who watched it. If you read the comments on YouTube, a lot of people are talking about how I shed some tears and I was so inspired and you guys are so great. So what was the premise of this whole thing? The, the entire premise was to tell my friend Jason's life story. And it seemed like the best um, sort of event to attach his life story to because his story is all about persistence. Um, he's grew up in a, to a broken home, a uh, single mom raising six kids. Um, dad left. Uh, Hi. <laughs> dad left, emptied the bank account before he left. So his mom has just scrapped the entire time with these six kids at home. He's dyslexic, so battled that. Was bullied. Um, my favorite detail in the whole film is the first two years he tried to be a wrestler <laughs> in junior high. He lost every single match. So he finally won one and then ended up, you know, making the varsity squad. And so he's built his whole life on this idea. And I just have, I've known him for 19 years now. And uh, it was just a way to tell his story because I think ultra marathons are exactly that. You know, it's just don't quit, believe in yourself, um, try hard, you know, and it's not, it's not a tough equation. Um, sure, you can get blisters and all sorts of other things can go wrong, but the one thing you keep in mind is how to not quit. I'm pretty sure everybody at the starting line of this race is more qualified to be here than us. I'm terrified, but at least we're doing this together. Ideally, we both finish this race. Worst case, one of us finishes. <laughs> and if only one of us finishes, it had to be Jason, because it's his story. Not everyone finishes an ultra marathon under the cutoff time. But Jason's whole life has been based on not quitting. So Brendan also makes a lot of really fun and funny and insp inspirational doodles. And a lot of them have to do with ultra running. Was it this film that kind of kicked off the running craze? No, I, uh, so I ran sprints in high school. Four by 100, four by 200. It was okay, <laughs> the distance, I mean, my coach put me in the 400 at one point, and I was like, this is long distance, coach, I can't do this. <laughs> 400, so, the 400 meters, honestly, is very difficult. Yes, well, if you run it really slow, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> that but goes for so, anything in life. But yeah, I've been curious about ultra running, because I had interviewed Kelly Cordes, who's an alpinist and one of my favorite writers and thinkers ever. I interviewed him in 2010, and he said, I said, oh, you're, you're pretty hardcore. And he said, well, you know, it's when you're on top of a mountain and you have to get back where you're gonna die, it's pretty easy to get motivated <laughs> to keep moving. But what about these people running 100 mile races when they get to mile 50? I guarantee you, no one's having fun. What is stopping you from just sitting down in an aid station where they have a fire and just being like, I'm done. Give me a beer and a bag of chips, I'm done. He said to keep going when you have that option, it's hardcore. So I've been curious since then. So in 2000, I guess 15, just sort of started exploring that. Dude, my first 50K went okay. 
and then started doing 50 mile races. So I'd done, when we signed up for our 100, I had done a 50K and two 50 mile races. But you're still well aware that you're going into very uncharted territory. So, and at this time in my life, I was kind of, had been doing a lot of rock climbing. I was a writer, or a contributing editor for Climbing Magazine for a few years. And I had just gotten to the point with climbing where the fear of doing it and all the things that could go wrong were really outweighing the benefits for me. I was kind of looking for something that was, I would call all the pain and suffering of mountaineering without the risk of death. Because <laughs> most, it's, statistically most people do not die during ultra marathons. No, you might, you know, the worst thing that could happen is you might get diarrhea and poop down your leg. Yes. <laughs> or, you know, injure yourself for, <laughs> for like four months or whatever. So, I guess the, the, the long runs is where I found that. And as we increasingly get into having data delivered every second and having our phones on all the time, it became an escape for me. Where I just shut off my phone and I'm out for, you know, some days my long runs take me seven or eight hours. Um, and it's really nice to just be like, okay, no one can communicate with me. Um, so it becomes this place where I do all my thinking of trying to do creative things. I love it. And speaking of running a long distance, when I usually do these, do these running with Ryan's, I run like four or five miles. But today, how far are we running? We're gonna, we're gonna go 26.2 miles. <laughs> uh, well, why are, we, why are we doing that? <laughs> I've been running a marathon every week this year, and this is 49. So we left my house 25 minutes ago, and we're in City Park right now. We're gonna go through a couple Denver parks, get two donuts, and uh, hopefully more than just two. Well, we're running a whole marathon, man. We deserve more. And what inspired you to run a marathon a week? That's that's a lot. I'm turning 40. January 2019. Maybe I just tried to do 52 marathons. <laughs> I love it, man. Guess who else turned 40 in January 2019? This guy. Look at this, we got speakers in the middle of nowhere. So, lots of marathons this year, once a week. That's pretty incredible. Has it made you a faster runner? I don't think so. I think it's made me better at running, mentally better at running marathons. I did run my fastest marathon ever last week on this exact trail, just trying to run fast. And I realized if you're gonna run a bunch of marathons in a year, running them fast is a mistake. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like, I'm a pretty, I default to like 420 marathons, like 10 minute miles, I just settle in and I'm just like doop to do. And I could do that week in and week out on flat ground. And that one was like 346, or 347, which is extremely fast for me. It's not fast for most people, but it's totally a different. I'm not sure what the point is, but I'm thinking the point will emerge at some point. Yeah, well, let's say you haven't gotten faster, but you have a, a whole hell of a lot of time to think about life. Yeah. You figured anything out? <laughs> the meaning of life is trying to find the meaning of life. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, it's a constant. You gotta keep going. It's never ending. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The, I feel like the best thing is not like having trying to do something big every weekend, but trying to do something every week and build something big out of these small blocks. If that makes sense. Yeah, and yeah. you know, at the very least, you're outside for five hours every weekend. Yeah. Sun, wind, rain. Yeah. Just enjoying nature. We're gonna run down the famous Colfax Street here. Look at this car. It's so awesome. <laughs> this is amazing. Look at that. That is an art car right there. So the reason why we're on Colfax is because Voodoo Donuts is on Colfax. We're running a marathon today and we're being fueled by donuts. Absolutely. Brendan, this is the best idea ever. Well, I've never done a donut marathon, so I got the old dirty bastard. Look at this thing. What'd you get? Oh, look at that maple, cute little donut. Maple old fashioned, see how it goes. Oh, we're gonna walk it out for a second and enjoy these donuts. Oh God. It's hard to run after you fill your belly with a giant donut. There's the Colorado State Capitol building. 
I remember field trips when I was a kid coming here and they told us at the top the dome is made out of gold, real gold foil. This cool building right here, this spaceship, is the Denver Art Museum. Denver is really cool. I need to come down here more often. We are in Cheeseman Park now, which is Brendan's old stomping grounds. How long have you been in Denver now? On and off 14 and a half years. 14 yeah. and a half years, and you just mentioned how many times, how many laps you've done around I this? Bet, I bet I've run a thousand laps around this park <laughs> over those years, so. It's my favorite. So let's get to the, the book stuff. You've written a lot of books. One in particular that was really influential to me is called Make It Till You Make It. It's essentially a play off the whole term, fake it till you make it, but you know, your idea is that you, you just make what you wanna make. And it's been very inspirational to me. I gave it to a lot of my friends. Talk, let's talk about more of that, because there's a lot of people out there watching this video that wanna run more or create more. And you have a pretty good method, what is that? I think, and I, do, I teach this on a writer's workshop I do, is that most people just feel like they need permission or, you know, a reason to do it and to believe in themselves and actually say, oh, I'm a writer or I'm a, an artist. And I, I think it's, with the democratization of media, it's really easy to start small and keep putting things out there and grow slowly and make mistakes when you're small and get bigger, as you've probably experienced with your YouTube channel. Totally, and for me, I mean, that book really got me fired up years ago when I started doing YouTube on a regular basis, and it was just like, keep on making, keep on creating. That's been the model I've done, is just try and put it out yourself, and eventually somebody you make notice, and might notice and pay you to do it, quote unquote, professionally. One but. of the things that you make a whole lot of are these fun doodles, these charts, on your Instagram channel. You've gotten pretty big, you have like 80 some thousand followers, and people look forward to these things every single day. It's been fun. You know how much money I make for each one of those when they go up? <laughs> Take a guess. Uh, zero cents? Yeah, zero cents. Zero cents. So, <laughs> but um, you get like 7,000 likes, and that's worth so much in today's <laughs> no, society. It's worth it in other ways, for sure. And I, like, I feel like the people who support me on Patreon, at least half of them are going, here you go, keep doing this. <laughs> uh, okay. Whoo, public bathrooms at Cheeseman Park do not smell good. Our smart man bringing that hand sanitizer. Oh what mile are we at? 9.3. 9.3, oh baby. So here we are in Washington Park. We're making a tour of all the parks of Denver. And let's talk about your speed. <laughs> you know, you, you proudly say that you're not a fast runner and you don't really care about running fast. Let's talk about that. I think it's a barrier to entry for a lot of people who think, oh, I could never do that because I can't run a seven minute mile or even like a 10 minute mile. And like, when you get out here or you go to races, you realize that not that many people are achieving at that high of a rate. Like a lot of people are doing a little walking. A lot of people are running 10 minute miles for a while and then 11, and, you know, and just to go out and do it is the thing to me. It doesn't matter. I'm not looking at my watch right now going, boy, Ryan, we really need to, kick it in, I got a lot to do today. <laughs> this is what I'm doing today. Yeah. And it's great to just be like, oh, maybe I'll be back at three, maybe four. Um, but just to be out here and enjoy being, enjoy moving at whatever speed is, I think the beautiful thing about it. Do you have any advice for somebody who's like, you know, just a little shy about getting out there? Maybe they don't even like wearing running clothes or maybe they just don't feel like they're gonna fit into the running culture. Oh yeah, I guarantee you, everybody in this park Right now, 95% of us don't think we look very good. We got too much sweat, we got too much jiggle, we don't like the way our legs look, we think we run funny. It's probably like 5% of people who are like, yeah, I look good. <laughs> so I think if people could get over that, it's, that's a big step, you know? As the great Micah True Caballo Blanco said, just run free, man. And it was all about just running and enjoying and having a smile on your face. And it's pretty impossible to go on a run and not smile most of the time. Some of the times you're not gonna smile. You might have some pain, but most of the time you're gonna smile. I just like to smile. Smiling's my favorite. Brendan just pointed out this amazing van. We're going off route to check it out. You're gonna love this. What is that? Look at that. They're kind of like Muppet goats in space. So I know a lot of you out there love bikes and bike adventures. 
Brendan is not only an ultra runner, but he has ridden his bike across the country and he loves bikes probably as much as the next person who loves bikes. Uh, what inspired you to ride across the country when you did that? Uh, a friend of mine from high school, Tony, said, hey, do you want to bike across America? <laughs> I'll pay for it. And I said, of course I do. <laughs> and uh, we hadn't hung out in about eight years very much since college. And so we spent 49 days together and it was a blast. Yeah. Um, did the Southern Tier route from San Diego to St. Augustine, Florida. Average 60 miles a day with four rest days. And in retrospect, I think we both think we should have taken more time to do it. But I mean, like you, I think that is one of the best ways to travel. So what do you think the value is of doing hard things, whether it's running or biking or, you know, being in a tough relationship and getting through some communication problems, <laughs> whatever? Uh, boy, you know, I don't know. I think sometimes you get to choose the hard things and sometimes people have the hard things chosen for them. Cancer, death in the family, you know, a lot of things that I haven't experienced that um, I think I've gone after the harder things to see what I'm sort of made of. Hopefully in preparation for some of those other hard things that come along that you don't expect. And I, I do think that people, it's cliche to say, but are capable of way more than they think they can do. And that's a way of testing it for me, getting into a hard situation and figuring out what you, what happens to you mentally. Because like, can you keep going? Can you fight through it? And you use those tools. I think I use those tools in other ways in life um, because you really can't spend your entire life doing physically hard things. You can do them for like 1% of your life, but then you have the rest of the things that come up at work or in relationships or any other thing. And you can use those sorts of persistence or dealing with fear or low expectations or whatever and apply that to the other things. Does that make sense? Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. The first running TED Talk, ladies and gentlemen, Brendan Laddard. Donut number two at Habit. Look at this thing, baby. Mile 24. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Brendan, what are you showing me? Uh, it's called National Velvet. <laughs> Looks like a pile of beans. I like it. Here is downtown Denver, all the new fancy apartments where all the fancy people live. My body's actually hurting. You know, Javelina wasn't long ago, and I haven't run on pavement this much in a long time, so. It's a lot of, a lot of hammering over. A lot of hammering. We are so close. So close. So close. Six tenths of a mile, according to this watch. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much for inviting me on your adventure. Thanks for coming all the way down to Denver. It's like a four hour drive. I know, it's, it's a big deal for me to go to Denver. So I thank you very much. I'm so impressed that you've run a marathon a week. I wish you the best of luck for the rest of the year. All of you out there that want to know more about Brendan, check out his website, semirad.com. Follow him on Instagram at semirad. Semi underscore rad. Semi underscore rad. Yeah, sure. He's got all sorts of inspirational, funny stuff that will put a smile on your face. And thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this tour of Denver with our tour guide, Brendan. You high five for running a marathon for YouTube. Yeah, that's right. We just ran a marathon for YouTube, baby. Please like and subscribe. We will see you down the road.